Wednesday morning, everybody. Welcome on into the Great Waves Now Community Spotlight for your Wednesday. We are here with Alan Adler, host and writer of our Truck Tech Community, joining us after a nice visit out on the road once again. Alan, you are in Cincinnati for a great look at some exciting tech. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we've been to Austin, Texas before to see Hyliod, and that was in the days when Hyliod was focused on doing a powertrain called the Hypertruck ERX. They were going to put them in Peterbilt uh, 579s, and they had a fair amount of interest that kind of died out over time because as the pandemic ended, the supply chain uh, crisis, I guess is the right word, uh, accelerated, and the costs of that particular product went up and up. The, the potential customers sort of hit the exits. And Hylion had to make a hard decision, and that was to basically press pause or, or mothball that project. But unlike a lot of um, startups and SPAC back startups, uh, Hylion was different. They still had money left. They could have returned it to the investors. They could have said, you know what, we didn't make it. You know, here's your remaining 300 million back. Instead, a couple of years ago, Haley, they purchased a technology from General Electric called Cardo. It's a generator <laughs> that essentially can operate on about 20 different fuels. It is, um, well, it's based on something called a Stirling engine, which essentially is not an internal combustion engine, it's an external combustion engine. Therefore, there is practically no emissions. There are, there are some, but they're negligible, and they really do meet all of the coming requirements, maybe not 2027 for EPA yet, but uh, for everything else that they want to do with this. So well, what we had an opportunity to do uh, last week, I guess, uh, whatever it was, we yeah. went to Cincinnati. They've taken over. They've leased a building uh, uh, in suburban Cincinnati where they are now in early production yeah, yeah, yeah. of the Carno. Yeah. Uh, Carno is interesting for a whole lot of reasons. So, Alan, you're talking about this as an external versus internal combustion engine. Can this be then like an add-on solution for any company that maybe has some trucks already that they have used but are looking to upgrade? Or is it still going to have to be a, it's built out in these new coming models? Okay. So, originally, um, Thomas Healy, the CEO's plan was to use the Cardo as a second source of, of power. They're, they're originally, they were set up around natural gas. Uh, being used to make electricity in a, in a generator. Yeah. And that was the way they were going to go to market. The second plan was to take the Carno and install it on their truck and and basically have that be the source of, um, you know, using the fuel that went into the Carno to make the electricity. Now they're focused yeah. much more on stationary applications yeah. like for electric vehicle charging, for uh, actually they have some marine applications they want to look at. They're doing... Um, you know, they're capturing uh, sort of flare gas or waste gas from oil and gas production in the Permian Basin. They've got a lot of opportunities for this technology. Now, what's fascinating about it is that most of it is 3D printed. It's additive manufacturing because the the systems that they make or the, or the, the parts they make are so... Uh, Specific, they really couldn't be made any other way. They, they, you know, you couldn't do it on a CNC machine. You certainly couldn't do it on a lathe. So they're able to essentially build these parts through uh, 3D printing, and that's really where uh, some of the magic is, quite honestly, because the Starling engine is over a century old. It's, it goes way back. But the idea that they are able to make the parts through 3D printing is interesting. You think of 3D printing, you say, oh, well, that's just for prototyping. You don't really you know, produced with that, but you, you can, in fact, do low volume production. And in fact, you know, GE has a big aerospace uh, business that is right there in Cincinnati. And, and this technology came out of uh, the GE aerospace business. They were working on principally the 3D printing because a lot of the parts in airplanes are 3D printed. Um, they don't make a lot of airplanes, so you don't need a lot of them. But in this case, uh, they think by bulking up on the number of machines that they get and putting them in Austin and as well as there in Cincinnati, that they can, in fact, have enough to to meet the demand for at least the early days of, of um, the Carno. So one thing that I always love to hit on when we talk about Hylion is their continued runway and the survival of the startup that was part of that really kind of coming forward craze in late 2019, early 2020. And they've done that, credit to Thomas Healy and his leadership team, by their availab availability ability to pivot and to find these additional sources of, I guess, direction for the company. 
Do we see anything else coming out of him soon? Or are we expected to see maybe a focus on this, as you mentioned, away from that drivetrain, the the hyperdrive? Good. Yeah, you know, they, they. I think you know, in in a wish, you know, if the world were wishes and they could all come true, I think there would eventually be a hyper truck ERX. But I don't expect to see that. What I think you will see, and what Thomas told me in today's interview, is that all the eggs are in this basket. Now, this is where the company is focused. Um, you know, they, they're basically the board has told them go for broke, make this work, get some revenue generated. And let's see if you have a real business. I mean, you know, Highland is different from most of the companies it, 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 that were like it in that when those companies ran out of money, it was game over. For highly on, it's different because of, as you said, the pivot. They were able to pivot to this technology and now make a real go of it. Now, there were 175 jobs that were lost when they shelved the hyper truck. And, you know, they're running, obviously, they're spending, you know, uh, about $50 million a year right now on the Carno. They were spending about three times that in trying to develop the the uh, hyper truck. So they would have run out of money like everybody else at some point. But instead, you know, this pivot allows them to have fewer people. It's interesting to me, and probably wouldn't know this if I didn't go to Cincinnati, is how many GE people followed that work over, including uh, uh, Josh Moak, who provides the tour in today's episode. Um, you know, he was, he's the CTO of Highland now, but he's been with the Carno technology for six years and worked on it at GE. There's about a dozen other GE engineers and so forth who came over when, uh, when Hylia bought this. So I love that we're going to continue to hopefully see them uh, make progress in this space. Alan, let's really quickly talk about the newsletter coming up for us here on this Friday. Talk to us about who we've got the feature on this week. Patrick Sullivan, that's kind of a common name, so I wouldn't expect that anyone would know it, but uh, he is interesting. Another startup that that we start tripped over this one. You know, most of the companies that are working on infrastructure for electric vehicle charging sort of go get the land and then figure out, you know, with utilities, how they're going to get the power to it. Um, this is a company, it's called, a great name really, EV Realty, that essentially finds the power first and then builds, uh, or wants to build anyway, the installations where uh, heavy and medium duty trucks can charge. Um, so we have a, a conversation I had with, with Patrick last week. Uh, we'll write that into the newsletter this week. And of course, we'll also, because we can't get away from it, Kaylee, we've got to talk about the latest developments once again at Nikola. We'll go into them here, but yes, you're going to get another segment on that Friday. There you go. So make sure that you go and subscribe to the Truck Tech newsletter. If you haven't already, FreightWaves.com, drop down the newsletters tab and get into it because, as you know, the drama never ends when it comes to Nicola. Alan, thank you for joining us this morning. We'll catch up with you next week. Okay, thank you. 